It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship, our second round of nine for 2023. The round is the Moto America Superbikes at Barber from Birmingham, Alabama, right here at Barber Motorsports Park. As we get set for our only super sport race of the weekend, and it is something unique and something new here in Moto America. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, here we are. Extended race, something different for Moto America. Yeah, none of us really know how it's going to work out because there can be all kinds of different strategies amongst these racers and teams. So 37 laps around Barber is going to be a long race, so it's going to be interesting to see how things go. So let's take a look at what an extended race means. As we look at our graphic, if number one, it's a 37-lap race, it's worth double points. And Jay, it's flag to flag. What does that mean? Flag to flag means however it starts, it's going to finish. So if it was to start raining in the middle of this race, they're not going to call everybody in and have you. you got to come in and change tires. That's going to be the way it is. So flag to flag means the race is not going to be stopped. One mandatory pit stop. It must be taken before the 24th lap is complete. And while you're on pit lane, there's a minimum time of 55 seconds. And we're going to explain all that as this race goes on because, Jason, this is an hour and a half broadcast for us because this race is going to last somewhere in the neighborhood of about 55 minutes or so. Yeah, we had a little practice at it because we got to do the Daytona 200 this year, obviously, with Moto America. So this is going to be new for the actual series. It's going to be new. We're going to do two of these this year, one here at Barber Motorsports, and the other one's going to be out west at Laguna Seca. For a lot of the riders, I think they're, they're a little, uh, they're, there's a lot of anticipation on what they are trying to expect as well. Fitness is going to come into play. Today we thought right now it's supposed to be pouring rain, they thought, and, and we've got clear skies and sunny right now. A little bit of clouds around. Temperature's gone up. So there's a lot of different strategies that you can play. Your championship leader, of course, with two race wins, is the Spaniard Chavi Forez, who comes to the U.S. and put his stamp on it early. And for Chavi Forez, Jason, he's got plenty of experience in races like this with a pit stop. Yeah, World Endurance, as you can see there, he's competed in the 2022 World Endurance. This is a, a guy that's got tons of racing experience in general. It's not going to bother him coming down pit lane. It's not going to bother him having a 55 seconds to do it all. This is where the teams really come into play as well. you got to make sure that the guys that you've got working for you are going to be calm and collect so that they can get the job done that they need to get. No mistakes in the pits. And Chavi's not going to have too much worries about any of that kind of stuff as far as the pit stops go. And make sure this is not the 200, by the way. We're yeah. going to talk about all kinds of pit strategies that happen. But let's welcome the third member of our broadcast team to our show. It's Hannah Lopa. Hannah, how's it going down there? Greg, Jason, the weather is holding off. It's going to be a beautiful race, I think. Now, you mentioned Chavi Forrest has world endurance racing experience. Chavi, how do you think that experience will lend itself to this longer race here? Well, I have a couple of uh, things in mind, depending on how the, the race is going because the, the most uh, important thing is going to be to save the tires. We had some issues uh, during the whole weekend about the tires life. Everyone on the grid, or mostly of them, uh, they had. So it's going to be a really long race in terms of uh, managing tires. So as much as I can stay on the track, is going to be the, the most positive thing from, from my side. But let's see. Let's see how it goes, because now it's more hot than the rest of the weekend, and maybe we can save more tires. Best of luck out there, Chavi. Now, you heard him mention tire degradation. Dunlop recommends no more than 20 laps maximum on these tires. I want to talk to one more rider before we get going. None other than our pole setter, Tyler Scott. Tyler, putting in some really fast times out there. How does that speak to how comfortable you are on this motorcycle here at Barber? Yeah, I think uh, me and the team came up with good setting for this weekend, and uh, um, it, it feels great even when the tire's going off a little bit. Uh, we tested some strategies in qualifying, and I think we're uh, set up really well for this uh, 37 lap short endurance race. Best of luck out there. Greg? A lot of confidence for Ty Scott. Of course, already your winner here in Super Sport. Trying to get another one. But Jay Barber Motorsports Park, 37 laps. It is a roller coaster. It is a roller coaster. You don't have much time to really relax around here as you go down into turn one, up to turn two. Big, a lot of elevation changes. Turn four is going to be flat out on these bikes. Down into heartbreaking turn number five. Then we head over towards that museum corner. Down that back straightaway, turns 12 and 13 are tricky, Greg. And then 14, 15, 16, you know those three corners there, it's really one big long corner. You flick it back over to that left, or to a very on camber last turn, and then down that front straightaway. It's going to be exciting. Pit stops, long race, all kinds of crazy stuff. Hey, number four, Josh Hayes, he's on the front row. He announced that he's racing the entire season with Squid Hunter. And of course, Mesa also on the front row. Three manufacturers, it's gotta be fun one.
Yeah, three manufacturers on the front row, four different manufacturers in the front four when you think about Javi Forez on the Warhorse HSBK Ducati. So a uh, really great parody here. It's going to be fun to see. You know, Michael Hill and I were speculating that when we were down in the pits, Roger, we weren't seeing anybody timing from pit their pit stall to pit out and all that stuff. And uh, nobody uh, other than the Squid Hunter team doing a mock pit stop under, under race conditions. Uh, but, you know, I... When I was talking to Josh Hayes, he kind of explained that. He said the others have been doing it. It's, you know, just not maybe in pit lane during a session in terms of the pit stops. But he said, and you kind of alluded to it here before we got on the air, that when they set that 55-second that time, it's based on a 10-second pit stop plus time up and down pit lane. So regardless, if you are complete your stop, say you only fuel, right? If you complete your stop in under 10 seconds, you just have to hold for 10 seconds. If you run over, you're over, so you're safe there. But the whole thing is, if you do a short fill or something like that, you just have to remember, don't release your rider until 10 seconds have, have clipped off. Yeah, if you come in and you just do a splash and go, then you're going to have to wait there. But if you're changing tires and gas, that 10 sec, it's going to take 10 seconds to do that. So it's kind of it's kind of already added in there for you where, you know, you don't have to worry about that. But you do have to worry about the pit stop. Yes. You know, even though the, the time is there, you could still make up or lose a lot of time on that pit stop. We've seen some guys at Daytona, you know, their race be run, come in, have a really bad pit stop. I was also, you know, there was a couple rumors yesterday. Some guys were talking about a two-stop strategy. And uh, I don't see how that could work because, you know, it would take so long to yeah. – come back in you know 55 seconds that'd be a lot to make up on a new tire in, in 37 laps so i don't know i don't see that happening but you know the pit stops is going to be huge and then also i know a lot of guys are you know worked on uh when do we need to pit stop yes. do we do 10 laps and then go back out and then you know try to be by ourselves? a lot of the other guys are some of the guys are wanting to make sure they pit on a different cycle than everybody else because they want to be on their own they yeah. want to ride their own race yeah, absolutely and of course michael hill down there michael we just heard the horn to clear the grid what's up yeah the grid's being cleared everybody back in the pit lane and i've got to tell you there are some worried faces down here looking up to the sky there are various uh, team members i just spoke to uh, one of the guys from the squid hunter team and there is rain predicted within the next 10 minutes there is a big black cloud coming in i don't want to be the bearer of bad news but there is a big black cloud coming in over the final sector on the circuit it is coming in quite slowly there's not a massive amount of uh, wind but uh, rain could be a factor in this race uh, so i think the guys are going to have to be uh, cautious well quick but cautious all eyes will be on the pit stop but as far as the teams are concerned all eyes are on the skies at the moment uh, with this big black cloud that is coming in the riders now on the warm-up lap and in a few moments time we are going to be making history in moto america the first ever long distance feature race including a mandatory pit stop for super sport it's going to be a cracker and as they mentioned too if yep. it does start raining there's not going to be a red flag yes you know this is going to be flag to flag so you can't be coming up to start finish line pointing up and trying to get a, a red flag it's not going to happen so you know whatever happens you know that's a thing it's going to be tricky too how long do you stay out if it does start raining before you get the slicks or rain tires yeah is is this rain squall going to pass in a hurry i mean there's a lot of things to be considering here for sure and we are just about ready to get this first ever super sport extended sprint underway moto america super sport coverage is brought to you by dunlop the official tire of the moto america championship series and by Geico Motorcycle. Visit Geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. Moto America Super Sport Extended Race. Jason, I know you're a little hungry, but look at the clouds rolling in. But yeah. we're focused on the starting grid, JP. <laughs> Ty Scott, Josh Hayes, and Mesa are on the front row with Chavi Forez. Teague Hobbs doing a great job again. And Corey Ventura up to six. Good to see Corey there. Maziato Nassini, LaRoche. Michael Gilbert, Soltis, and Damian Jagalov there on the outside of row four. Then we have Nick Seiling, David Ortiz, Nathan Seethaler, uh, Declan Van Roslin, Sean Hopkins is back there as well, Greg, as long as Dylan Yelton. Then we have Jordan Tropkoff, Mallory Dobbs, Chuck Ivey, Corey Hart, Timothy Frey, and Kevin Horney. Yeah, Jay, impressive. Look at the black cross to the right. We, you, I guess we jinxed it a little bit. <laughs> no, maybe, no, 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 maybe. no. Hannah Hopefully maybe not. a little bit, you know. Hannah, Hannah maybe a little bit. Yeah, we'll see. Moto America's first extended race, 37 laps, mandatory pit stop. 
That means that you've got to do at least one. That pit stop has to be done if this is regulation by the finish of lap 24. But here we go. Red lights are on, revs are up, clutches are out, and more away racing on lap one of 37. And boy, it looks like Ty Scott on the 70 Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki got a fantastic launch. Javi Forez in fourth place trying to sweep around the outside. Mesa on the Titlers, Kawasaki in second, and then Squid Hunter Racing's Josh Hayes in third spot. You know, the thing is, is that we know that uh, the Ty Scott's got some pace, Greg. He showed that earlier as Chavi Forrest goes diving up the inside of Hayes. He's going to get Hayes squaring him back up there, goes back underneath. Hayes is not going to want to let Ty Scott get too far down the road and make it easy on it. So expect Josh Hayes to come back after him, but he's got his hands full right now with Chavi Forrest. It looked like he was trying to go back up underneath him as they went down there into the museum corner. There we go. We so Chavi Forrest did get through, Greg, up to third. Then you got T. Hobbs, and it looks like Corey Ventura made a good start on the disrupt bike. He's in sixth. So right now at the front, we'll see these guys probably all start to close back up. It's just that when we think about it, Ty Scott so far this weekend, he was the first one into the 26s, and he did it relatively easily. And you heard him say in his pre-race interview that him and the team have come up with some good strategies, made the bike very easy to ride. Tires doesn't look too bad, so it could be trouble for the rest of them. Now, when we start to talk about this, the neat thing about this race for us is who is going to be pitting when? How much fuel does each one of these bikes have? And some teams may have chose, Greg, to only fill the tanks half full right now, maybe do 10 laps, maybe do 15 laps. That's what we're going to start to keep an eye on, as you can see the track temperature, as well as the outside temperature right now. That little bit of breeze is keeping it a little bit cooler now that we have uh, we saw the sun out here an hour or so ago, and it was getting really warm. Yeah, so the problem is, is that this time of year, it's the first time we've been to Barber Motorsports Park this time of the year in quite a while, and of course, after a summer of the track baking, and then we go into fall, the track acts a lot different than coming from the winter into the spring. And so we showed up, and there's a little bit of cold tear uh, on these tires. So it's a tire light that Chavi Forez was alluding to. And of course, it had been cloud cover up until a couple hours ago. The sun has broken through a couple of times. But Jay, the clouds have rolled back in and cooled things off again as we take a look at our aerial Support provided by the Lucas Oil helicopter. So yeah. a good run at it, Jay. Now, a good view. The top three guys are getting away a little bit, G-Dub. All right, so there's a couple things to think about here. If you watch the Daytona 200 in terms of the rules, in this particular race, the rules have been altered slightly to say, look, if we get to the completion of lap number three, then this race will be a continuous race, meaning if for some reason there is a race stoppage, it's just going to continue on from where it was before. But, Jay, we look at it, and you have to think, what is the race strategy? The mandatory pit stop has to be done by lap 24. In that particular case, you mentioned it, Jay. What do you do? You come into lap 5. You come into lap 10. When are you going to need a tire? When are you going to need fuel? These motorcycles so completely different. As Chavi Forrest goes up the inside of Mesa. He tried anyway. Yep, and he gets a second spot. So the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati rider from Spain on the Pentagoli V2 will take over the second spot. So, Jay, there's so much to think about and what are teams going to do because this is not the default, the, like, kind of the default Daytona 200 is Forez. Looks like he's got to go up the inside. So all of a sudden, Javi takes over the lead. This time he learned from the pass he made on Josh Hayes to keep it nice and tidy down into Charlotte's Web, and he'll take over the spot. Yeah, and so far, Chavi Forrest has shown that he can kind of run the pace. Ty Scott, 27.6 is the quickest lap of the race. 27.5, actually, for Forrest is the quickest lap of the race. And we saw some 26s and some mid to low 26s. And look at Forrest, Greg. He's starting to take off. So the thing is, is Hayes now, is this starting to sprinkle somewhere? When you start seeing riders looking back and you start seeing this big split, look at the split. It makes me kind of think there could be some sprinkles in the area that we just haven't seen on our screen yet because Hayes now is coming forward as well as he's going to go by both Mesa and it looked like he was going up underneath Ty Scott down there off the back straight up. So now all of a sudden Hayes is there. Look at how everybody's tightening up. Yeah. Te and, and you see there Corey Ventura is there. Teague Hobbs is there now. So and the lean angles aren't as much. Greg, I really starting to think it might be sprinkling in some areas of the track. Yeah, it definitely might be. And again, this is a flag to flag race, which means if it starts to rain, the red flag's not coming out. It's, it's up to the rider's responsibility to, to pit when they need to. So you look at those lap times, and there it is, Greg. There's some rain already. That's why we were seeing this field start to split up. Now, the guys in front obviously have the two most ex the, the two most experienced guys. You'd expect them to be where they are. Chavi Forrest is going to be out front 
with some some rain coming down handy you got something for us you guys it is starting to rain the sprinkles are picking up i don't know if you can see some of the little drip raindrops on my shoulders here but talking about chavi boris this is a brand new track for him so so far he's really enjoying the layout and he's having to learn as he goes but one thing he mentioned is he's confident in the rain but he's never ridden at this track so he doesn't know how the conditions will be if this rain really starts to pick up and that's the thing, Hannah, that's a good report because this guy here has got more experience in these kind of conditions than probably anyone. Greg, when it's raining in a world endurance race, he's pulling away right now, looking back, thinking, is there something I, I should know that maybe I don't know? He's getting away from these guys just off of experience. When you are doing a world endurance race like he is, he's used to being on the motorcycle for an hour. And you have to continuously evaluate, look around you, look above you, feel the wind and those kind of things to see if the rain's going to continue. Do you pit? If you pit right now, Greg, you're going to come in, put rains on, your tires are going to just get destroyed. So you're better off slowing the pace down a little bit like some of these guys have done. Stay out there, evaluate the track a little bit. Now, they're going to see Forrest and Hayes getting away. That's going to give these four a little bit of I guess calmness, I guess you could say, of knowing that, okay, those guys up front, they're still running pretty decent times, but it was three seconds last time, and right now, they're right back into the 28s. So whatever we just had was a very, very, very small sprinkle. So Tyler Cycles, Kawasaki, Stefano Mesa, come into the series, holding on to it. He's got a pair of Vision Wheel M4 X-Star Suzuki's behind him. And then we have Corey Ventura on the 28 on the Disrupt Racing. Suzuki GSXR 750. So, currently we have the Ducati out front, a next generation super sport machine. We have the Yamaha R6 of Josh Hayes, one of the older motorcycles there, still competing, obviously, and doing really well. And the Kawasaki ZX6R, which is along the same category as Josh Hayes' older Yamaha R6, Ty Scott, T. Hobbs, and Corey Ventura with Michael Gilbert in seventh place all on the next generation motorcycles. Again, aerial support provided by Lucas Oil on the left part of your screen as we take a look at Chavi Forez. And Jay, the thing about it is, being in the south, this racetrack doesn't, doesn't cover a huge amount of acreage like some of the other right. tracks, but it still has the characteristic of it could be raining in one or two corners and not on the other side of the race. Yeah, right? and again, you're looking at experience. The top three guys have all got the most experience. Forrest, Hayes, Mesa, and then you got three kind of young guns, don't you, Greg? Tyler Scott, Teague Hobbs, Corey Ventura. These are all younger guys with, with a little bit less maybe knowledge in these kind of conditions. So this is going to help them in, in, in the future. It's going to help them as they continue to grow. These lap times, though, I just saw Hayes now back down into the 27s, 27.7. He was the quickest rider on the track. Was Josh Hayes. He's got that gap down to under a second now to Chavi Forez. So, and, and Ty Scott, all of them now look like they're starting to put their heads back down a little bit. But Hayes right now is really the guy that's on the charge. You can see he's closed this gap down. And then we got this battle for third between the, you know, Mesa Hobbs, Scott, and Corey Ventura. You know what I'm thinking about, Hannah, when you get to talk to some of these riders, what's the possibility of, we know the teams will let the riders know when it's time to come in, but can some of these riders tell the teams when, if they need to come in for some reason? There's been a couple of different strategies discussed. Obviously, all the teams really went through last night what it's going to take. Stefano Mesa, for instance, has said he's going to let the bike tell him when it's time to come in. He said he'll point down at the rear tire when he, he wants to come in and get a rear tire. He does not have quick change front, so that'll be a challenge for him. But he's going to let the team know. Other instances are mostly just the teams notifying their rider via pit board. But some of the teams have plans to do like a little motion, just kind of putting their hand down by the side of their bike. Or, you know, Josh Hayes, for instance, they discuss strategies of whether he wants just a front or just a rear, and they'll have different signals for the team to understand what he's specifically wanting when he comes in. Absolutely crazy. And you know, Jason, when we go to a race like the Daytona 200, it, it's forced pit stops. I mean, you're gonna run out of gas, but in right. this particular instance, especially when we have bikes like this V2, it can almost go the entire race distance because it's a next generation motorcycle that's had some of the power backed out of it. That's right, yeah. And you know, the other thing too is that is that the, everybody's gotta be in pit lane for 55 seconds. Yep. So if you can take on two fresh tires, you might as well just do it. We know that the fronts generally will go the distance no problem, but if you have the ability to do that and you have a good crew that can get you kind of in your pit stall, get front and rear changed and get you back out, you're better off taking both tires to at least know that you're gonna have that longevity if the race goes that full 37 laps. We talk about pit stops, the 55 seconds, how it breaks down is pretty simple. Moto America, from the stripe of coming into pit lane to the stripe on the exit where riders have to slow down to 60 kilometers per hour have done the math. 
And they basically say, look, it's 46 seconds. Now, they've averaged pit stops to be nine seconds. You add those two together, that's how they came up with the 55 seconds. If you choose not to pit, or if you choose not to stop, you just need to be in pit lane from stripe to stripe on the ground for a total of 55 seconds. It doesn't mean you have to stop. It means you have to at least ride through. But in this case, with fuel, with the length of the race, 37 laps, and of course, with what's been going on with the rear tire, and now the possibility of rain in the area, I can't see anybody who's just gonna do a ride through. You can see and a couple it's, sprinkles. It's, getting, it's got, starting to get really, really dark here, even in our commentary position, it's starting to get dark, and Forrest has pulled away just a little bit more. You saw Hayes was a lot closer to him just now. Now Josh, and again, look at the lean angles, Greg. Lean angles aren't as great, so it's raining up in turn two, it looks like, or at least starting to get on the rider's screens ever so slightly. So this is where you gotta be starting to get careful because it's definitely, I see rain flags again. Rain flags are being displayed right outside our window here and going into there on the left-hand side of the screen. You can see those rain flags are starting to be displayed. Now, it's getting dark enough out there where as a rider, if I'm out there riding around, you'll be able to kind of see, look around, and here we go, Greg, we got a big crash right now on this is gonna be the second to last corner. The right-hander coming onto the front, that leads into the left coming onto the front straightaway. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Declan possibly on the 25. Yeah, red down. Flag. All right, so red flags are out. So race stoppage for now. Jay, let's see if we yeah, can see something. This catches out. It looks like Carl Soltis there. It just goes through. And then the next rider, yeah, the one rider goes down. And then, so obviously it was raining over in these last sect and, uh, sections of the track. A little bit, oh man, Declan just got thrown high for a side. big high side there for him. And then it looked like we were gonna have a third rider possibly come into screen. And I'm just trying to see who that is there, Greg. Oh, two, uh, two more two riders. two more that go down. So yeah, it's... So immediately the red flag comes out. And now we'll have to get this entire situation sorted. So hang tight in our extended super sport race from Barber Motorsports Park. All right, red flag out here and uh, we have completed six laps. So that will be the uh, point when we get back to going again. Uh, we're past that three lap uh, window, Roger, where it would just be a completely brand new start. So now we're into that uninterrupted here's you start as you finish that last completed lap uh, but obviously it just suddenly lit up over there in terms of rain and as we look from our booth over here to that final corner it's a really thick cloud and that's the best thing we can see yeah uh, Declan he was airborne for a long time and to see him up and walking is amazing I mean the safety in these suits is something else yeah it? the airbag technology is just so so huge now and it's a must so it's great to See that technology, man. He went. He went. He went for a ride. But you know, that's the thing about these road race tracks. They're so long. You know, they probably came through the first and second part of the track, and there was no rain. Yeah. They thought yep. everything was okay, and then they get into that last sector there, and the, and the rain was pretty pretty heavy. And and uh, rain on slicks is, you know, a bad combination. But you know, that was the rules of the race, though. You know, it was yep. it's flag to flag. If it was wet, you can come in and get tires. So. You know, just unfortunately, it, you just caught him off guard. Well, up until that squall hit over there, I don't, I don't think it, it was wet enough to say, you know, normally we got to stop it and and put on wets. Uh, that just cropped up. It just hit suddenly, and uh, there is a uh, look. That's Corey Ventura, who's uh, really having a solid ride here uh, in this one as well, sitting up in the uh, sixth spot. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Michael, uh, Javi Fora has got a great start, went to the front early, but, man, he has had company for the last number of laps in the form of Joshua Hayes, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. I've met it down here, and uh, I don't know if you can probably can't tell, but it is now raining very, very heavily. Uh, Chavi Forrest uh, was a couple of seconds in the lead, and then the rain came. You took a big, long look over your shoulder, saw there was nobody there. Uh, Josh Hayes had closed you down, but uh, not ideal situation. You've got a lot of experience in the World Championship, World Endurance Racing. How are you feeling right now? Well, it was a shame they stopped the race because I, I thought I thought it was like being flat to flat, um, long distance race and doing a pit. Uh, it was declared as a as a wet race, but I didn't expect the red flag because my 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 target was to stay out as much as I could on the on the dry tires and then made the change of the tires when when uh, when it was the, the best moment for me. But unfortunately, this. Uh, 
red flag. Uh, I wasn't expected, but anyway, uh, now it's quite heavily raining, so my bike is working well on wet, so I think they are going to short a little bit the race, and hopefully we can stay on the same place at the end of the race. Yeah, just to let you know, they didn't stop the race because of the rain. There was a multiple rider crash. That's why they stopped the race. So uh, otherwise, it, otherwise you were right. You, at least you read the rule book, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, apologize for that. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, Chavi Forrest has a lot of experience. Uh, I don't know if you want to just stay with me for a second because uh, if I just go to the opposite side uh, down here, I want to get a quick word uh, with Tyler Scott, and it is now absolutely pouring uh, down here. In fact, uh, Hannah Hannah's going to speak to uh, Tyler. Let me see if we can get a word uh, with uh, somebody else uh, down here. It's absolutely torrential rain now and uh, let's see if we can get a word with a couple of other riders let's go to the disrupt racing team there we go so everyone's trying to run for cover Corey Ventura uh, is just sat here if we can get a quick word uh, with Corey Hayden Gillum down here just keeping an eye out and uh, well how are you doing mate I'm doing great <laughs> oh man uh, sorry I'm getting wet yeah I'm gonna get my hair wet thank you mate Hayden Gillum is trying to help us, but making a complete mess of it, and the water's just running straight down my back. But uh, it's all right. I get paid for this, so we're all good. Yeah, I, the water's coming down fast. I mean, two minutes ago, it was just dry out here. And uh, I came through the right-hander back over here, and I was like, oh, things are good. And I saw Teague sit up, and it started pouring. I'm like, all right, I might have, like, a couple corners to just get a little bit. And I was almost straight up and down, and the thing just spun out from underneath me. And I was like, well... It's not as good as I thought. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, good luck when we get back out there. I know that uh, Hannah Loper, the, uh, one of our other broadcast members, is also down here trying to take shelter, and I believe she is with Tyler Scott. I am definitely dry from the rain. I'm with Tyler Scott, Michael, as you mentioned. Tyler, tell us about the track conditions as that rain started to fall a little bit more consistently. Uh, yeah, the, the track was pretty good right off the start. No rain, and then uh, got a little sprinkle uh, to start it off. And then it felt like the track was getting good again. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, a big downpour. Take me through the start of that race. How were those opening laps until the weather started to change? The opening laps were pretty relaxed till the rain came down and just trying to find uh, the point of grip that was out there. And um, every corner it was changing. I know the rain for me started over there on uh, turn 12 and uh, just trying to feel out the, the grip that we had. And then obviously the big downpour. Now that you've had the opportunity to kind of see how this race started, I know that the, the weather conditions are a bit different for this restart here potentially. Is there anything that you want to change or do differently or anything you saw that could help? Uh, maybe put some wet tires on for the start of the restart, um, but we'll see. Safe to say that's a fair plan, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, here's the deal. It's going to be a real crapshoot in terms of do you put reins on be based on how quick this start's going to happen because there's what's coming through us. It's not very long. It's going to move through in a hurry, you know, maybe 20 minutes or so, and it's going to blow through here. It's going to be heavy as it comes through, but then it's going to be gone. You put a rain on and go out there and it starts to dry, those rains are going to overheat and chunk in a massive hurry, so you're back in again. Uh, this is this is strategy time. And it just depends on how much it rains. It's definitely going to, you know, the track is going to dry really fast. Yep. So with all those bikes out there and so many laps left in a race, it's going to have to be pretty wet for those guys to get out there on the wets, and that's going to be... One of those decisions they make, how long are we going to be under this red flag? And then, you know, looking at the radar, all the teams are looking at probably every weather app you can yeah, think of. Exactly. Trying to, trying to find the, the best one. Because none of them one. are the same ever. Uh, here's the deal. With a red flag restart, if it's between lap 4 and 27, you just they line them up as you finished at the previously full completed lap. So the order is as it is. Getting back to what I was talking about, seeing how quick that's uh, that's moving through, this is what we see in certain spots, but we look over into that turn uh, 12, 13, 14, that last complex of corners, it is thick and dark. What's your play here, Roger, if you're calling strategy for these teams? Well, right now, if they were the, to start to race the way it looks, I would probably have to go with slicks. And yep. just because, uh, you know, I feel like it's going to dry out really fast here, especially if the sun comes out just for, you know how it is, here in the south, when, oh, yeah. get, when that sun comes out, it's going to bake this asphalt and it's going to dry out really quick. So I guess it just depends on how much rain we're going to get, how much more do we think that we're going to get. That's yep. going to be the big thing. Do we think it's over? So uh, I guess all these guys will probably be waiting, you know, seeing the the safety car coming up the, the front straightaway there. It looks like it's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good little mist there. Like maybe it rained a little bit more than we can see here in the booth. 
Well, let's get uh, down to Hannah. She's out in the weather. What's the word from your perspective, Hannah? It's pretty strange out here. You know, the wind really picked up there and the rain started coming down more consistently, a little bit heavier, and suddenly it's gone. The clouds have parted and the sun is really trying to, to shine through. The rain has stopped, so it's a bit confusing to see if this will hold off. I did talk to Scott Paget, our lead grid marshal, just regarding the rules during a red flag scenario. Normally in Motor America races, the riders and teams are not allowed to change their tires, but for specific instances such as this, considering that it's an extended race, they are allowed to change the tires. So right now I'm looking at the Warhorse HSBK bike. They don't have any tires on it. It looks like they're deciding what to do. And it looks like both of the uh, Vision Wheel and 4XR Suzuki bikes have warmers on their tires. So I can't quite see what's under there, but I don't think that they have changed them as of yet. So, you know, waiting to hear more. Yeah, Hannah, and I guess the question is going to be what, when are they anticipating this restart? If it's going to be within the next you know, few minutes, obviously, it's wet enough. Probably you'd have to be uh, out on wets. But if they're waiting a little bit here uh, to get it going, Roger, you mentioned it. If it's getting dry already and, you know, Hannah, uh, maybe you're getting information down there. What's the play? Have you heard? I actually did. Scotty just gave me an update as I'm walking down the pit lane here. We're going to restart this race in four minutes, and it has been reduced to 22 laps. All right. Thanks very much. Michael? Yeah, thanks, Hannah. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say the same. The clock just behind me started as Hannah started talking uh, down there. Just come with me. We've got a chance, I think, to grab a couple of uh, words with a couple of riders. Uh, Jarrett Nassani, who's been uh, doing a great job uh, this uh, season with the Altus Motorsport team. He's just here putting the helmet on. Uh, we're maybe not going to get a word with him, but let's get a word with uh, team owner and uh, Jarrett's father uh, down here as well. George, very, very quickly, we've got to get this restart. Uh, you said before this race, uh, the nerves were a little bit high. And uh, how are they feeling right now? My heart is definitely pumping, but we're set. We, we made a plan I think we've executed it and are you gonna tell us obviously is the plan now obviously I can see the fuel going in I'm guessing when you do do a pit stop there's no fuel now correct unless we feel like we're gonna add anything else I think we're good to go good job thanks sir George I want to very very quickly if we can before we head back upstairs just to get the build-up done uh, want to have a word if I can with Mallory Dobbs because she has done uh, a phenomenal job uh, here uh, this weekend so far she's qualified inside the top 20 and uh, she's with me now Mallory I've got to say out of all the riders uh, sat down here you're looking very chilled cu cool as a cucumber <laughs> I don't know if I feel like I'm cool as a cucumber but I mean the rain's okay to me I knew I Everybody was talking like, oh, the rain held off. And then as soon as we started rolling, it started trickling. And I just kept at pace and tried to play it safe. And uh, I hate this like mixed condition stuff, but you know, we're adaptable. Obviously they're gonna restart this race very soon. It's gonna be a 22 lap race, uh, I believe. So uh, now what's the strategy? We're gonna stay on rains for as long as possible. You know, the pit stop's gonna take a lot of time. So we're just gonna run on the rains and maybe now pray for some more rain. <laughs> great job, uh, Mallory Dobbs doing a great job. Have a safe race and we'll see you at the finish. Thank you so much, Michael. Great job, Roger. Uh, I'm going to hand uh, back to you and Greg upstairs. Uh, can you believe it? The sun is now shining, and I'm uh, burning my uh, my head. It's unbelievable down here. Yeah, when with the sun, you know, it's going to be. It's just making it that much more tricky. It looks like yeah. it's raining everywhere, but on the track. When yeah, you look exactly. At it and see the clouds. I mean, it's just dark all over. So it's going to be tricky. These guys got to make a decision quick. Yeah, and you can see this sun from the uh, Lucas Oil helicopter aerial cam. Uh, we sure appreciate that. It is just lighting this place up. Uh, but that's what's going to make it intriguing. And understand, folks, the stop that they made under the red flag here does not count for their pit stop. That's still got to happen, and it's got to happen uh, within that two-thirds lap distance. Here's a look at the weather behind what's moving through. Not much. So we're going to see how this all plays out here. It's time for us to get back over to Greg White and Jason Pridmore. Welcome back to Barber Motorsports Park. Red flag conditions with our aerial coverage provided by Lucas Oil and the Lucas Oil helicopter. Jay, let's take a look at what we've had so far. The six lap highlights from race number one. Yeah, it was a good start from our front row. Ty Scott got out to the lead early. Mason jumped in and, and Josh Hayes as well. But Chavi Flores was the man on the move early as you're gonna see him start to make some passes on people. He goes up underneath Hayes. Hayes squared him up. Chavi Flores was able to go back by him by the time they got down to the museum. Next up was Mesa. He was able to slide through on Mesa down into turn one, and the number 12 went to work then. On catching Ty Scott, which he did, at this point, he would go on and lead until our red flag. You can see him starting to pull away. It was kind of curious because we could start to see this get splintered at the front, so there was rain in the area. Parts of the track were getting wet. The two most experienced guys went to the front, that being Josh Hayes and Chavi Flores. You can see it on our screen, Greg. 
Chavi Juarez started to get closed down. Josh Hayes started to close him down. And then we had this incident coming out of the turn 16 area. One rider went down, and then Declan, man, Declan Yeesh. goes for a big ride. I was so happy to see him get up. And then a little bit later, Ortiz went down as well. So we had three riders go down there as Declan. He got up and was able to walk away. Thank goodness. It's just that early rain. It just can catch riders out. And yeah, especially when it's like corner to corner. Yeah. There, there is, you know, flags. But all right, so let's, let's look at basically how this whole thing plays out. So in the red flag situation, the first three laps, it was a full race restart. So we're beyond that because we've done six laps. So laps 24 through 27, uh, you know, the position at the time flag. So in this particular case, what we've done is we've reduced the amount of laps. So instead of a 37 lap affair, this is going to be a 28 lap affair. Initially, you're going to have to get your pit stop done by lap 24. That's going to take us, Jason, to now lap 18. So six are already done. So in the next 12, red flag does not count. This does not count as a pit stop. Okay, so if you haven't done a pit stop, which as far as we know, no one came in the pits yet and had done a pit stop. So basically, you still have to come in and do your 55 seconds pit stop. Yeah, so let's talk strategies. So if we knew that we were going to go run a 22 lap race right now with the sun coming out, the track has freshly just been completely dumped on rain wise. So if you're a rider and you have to start to be able to think, I still have to do a pit stop regardless. Mm -hmm. If you go out there on slicks right now, you're going to lose so much time to those that might put wets on. You have to be out there on wets right now, in my opinion, because you have to do a pit stop anyways. And right now I can see out the window that there's quite a bit of water coming off the tires of the riders that are going out. Now we saw Josh Hayes had reins on and I think that that is the call here because you're going to have to pit anyways and if you go out there on slicks and you're waiting for a dry line you're going to be waiting for nothing because the people that are on reins are going to be long gone by that point so when they make their pit stops and they switch over to slicks they're going to continue to go forward so right now I'm hoping that the teams that made the right decision I think that the rain tires are the right way to go yeah and you know from our broadcast position it still looks pretty dark out there I wonder if it's raining and how we would find hey wait a second Hannah's out there in the rain Hannah's out there getting wet Hannah what is going on out there is it still raining out is the wind blowing what do you got for us well, I'm no weather girl, Greg. Like I said at the start, I thought <laughs> it was right, going to be a beautiful race. So far, I'm half right because <laughs> we just had a red flag situation. The rain started to come down very heavily. It was so dark out here. And suddenly, the clouds parted. The sun started to shine. And we thought that things may be turning around. And it looks like it's getting a little dark. And it is starting to sprinkle once again. So I think those who are out on rain tires right now, which is most of the riders that I've seen go past me here in the pit lane, have made the right decision. Now, we did talk about this pit stop. And with the shortened race, they will have a mandatory pit stop and I talked to our rules director and he said that by lap 18 they need to come in and make that pit stop mandatory. Now what you're looking at is not what's over the racetrack right now. Yeah. That is from our commentating position that is behind us. So let's take a look at what we're looking on the weather radar. So if you see the word Birmingham, we're kind of by the R and the M, wouldn't you say, I'd Jay? I'd say so, a little bit east of Birmingham, yeah. And Yeah, um, the word Birmingham itself. Yep. So we're a little bit east on I-20. So you can see the cell kind of popped up. You know, look, rain is rain. We're good with rain. This is Barber Motorsports Park. It was repaved in 2019. It is great grip in the wet. The one thing we don't want, as we look at rain tires and what they look like versus slicks on the left. Yeah, so I don't think, I just don't think slicks are the call. There you go, Josh Hayes. I'd be doing what he does. So Josh Hayes on rain tires right now, that is the best choice because. Yeah, he wants and, rain. Yeah, he he's, wants he's, it. And, like, and being go. on slicks right now is a, is a bad call. And uh, I think that, that that will be something. If you go out on slicks right now, you're going to be losing so much time to everybody that's on the reins. Uh, so it's going to make it a tough race for those that have chosen to be on slicks right now. Now, if it was a condition where we didn't have to have a pit stop, slicks might be the way to go. Wow. But it's not. Reins are the way to go, I think. Mesa on slicks. There's a little bit. I, I'm a little surprised to see that too. on Mesa because He's experienced. However, Jay, the one thing that we don't know about, and I'm not specifically talking about Mesa, yeah. but this field has a variety of budgets, yeah. a variety of, you know, uh, different levels of teams. And so how many wheels are available? Because this was a race that was scheduled for pit stops. So maybe you only have two sets of wheels. Maybe you only have three sets of wheels, and they all had slicks on them, and you are kind of put yourself in a position in that way just because of the budget of the yeah, team. No, so there's, there's a lot of things to be thinking about. There's a about. lot of things to be thinking about, but at the end of the day, the thing is, is that you know you're going to have to do a pit stop regardless. Yep. And uh, just giving up too much track position at the beginning for those that are on slicks is going to be too much, I think. So 
I believe, you know, and, and it's easy now, I've seen Josh on reins, the, the person that will win this race will be on, on reins right now, get those first six laps out of the way. If it stays cloudy or the sun, uh, you know, if the sun comes out, track's gonna drive quicker, but now we've only got 22 laps to go. So even if yeah. they do four or five laps, they're gonna go out and do 18 or 17 on dry. So the thing is, is you wanna try to make these rain tires last as long as they can. And then once that dry line starts to appear, once it becomes, becomes one nice dry line that you can go out and ride around on slicks on and keep temperature in the tires, that's what you're gonna do. Now, I know those of you that have known about AMA Superbike Racing at Barber Motorsports Park for 20 years, of course, 20 years and two days ago was the first race held here. It was a Grand Am race, but later on that season, AMA Superbike came. And Jason, if you hearken back to 2003, Super Sport race, it was a wet, dry race. And a lot of the front runners, Tommy Hayden included, Miguel Duhamel, a lot of the front runners went out on dry tires. The difference between that was back then, they were DOT approved dry That's tires right. with a little bit of, of grooves in them. So we're on full slick tires as opposed to, you know, the full reins. So back in 2003, 20 years ago, similar race conditions. For those of you that think all the way back yeah, and knew what ago. I'm talking about. Yeah, so. right, right now, Chavi Forez and Josh Hayes. Oh, there we go. There's, some, there's crash there. That looks like, uh, is, it the, is it, it? I don't want to, I hate speculating. Yeah, we don't so, know exactly, obviously, but definitely we're not speculating when it's. I think it's Jarrett Nassani. Yeah. I believe it's Jarrett Nassani. So I can see Altus now on the leathers. Yeah, and so it looks Nassani, like they're, they're and reins. He on, and he was on reins. So, again, conditions are tricky. And uh, Jarrett's gone down. It looks like, Greg, um, after you go down the back straightaway there, uh, you can see he's, looks like he lost the rear, just kind of spun him around. So obviously still a little slick. That's but this unfortunate is, and, and the thing that you're going to find right now is you're going to see some people, the people that are on slicks are going to go backwards to start. The people that are, are on reins are going to go forward. And you can see there's already going to be some dry patches starting. But again, Chavi Forez and, and Josh Hayes, I know are on reins because I could see them doing the warm-up lap together. And uh, those two guys, yeah, there's Nassani's bike. Yeah, he's going to have to go back to the yeah. pits and get working on it. That yeah, thing's not ready to go, so. And you can see from that Lucas Oil helicopter shot moments ago that the sun is now broken through and you can see the shadows that are being cast. Crazy race we're going to have, I think, this to be is, honest with you. This pretty is nuts. nuts. Yeah. Super Sport, Moto America, extended race, scheduled for 37 laps with a mandatory pit stop, now knocked down to 28 due to red flag conditions because it started to rain in our flag to flag race, which means what conditions we start off with, if it changes, we keep going racing because there are pit stops allowed in this race and tire changes allowed in this race. But now teams have been able to put fuel on it, change their tires. They still have to come in and do their mandatory pit stop. So what is gonna happen here? What is the strategy? Is it going to dry out? Is it gonna rain again? Are the people that are on wets, like Chavi Forez on the left part of your screen, Josh Hayes in the middle, are they gonna have an advantage over the 37? Who sits on slick tires? Jason, you called it. We expect the rain tired shod bikes to start to pull away from the slicks. But who knows? It's time to get our race number two going when these lights go out. Good start from the 70. Ty Scott was your pole sitter. He gets off to a good launch. He's trying to pinch out Josh Hayes. And away goes Chavi Forez, one of the most experienced rain riders in the field, coming from so many different series over the years, including World Superbike. And you can see it's kind of tiptoed through the tulips time. That's what you got to do. But these two guys right now, they're going to take off and try to get as big a gap as they can as Hayes is going to go past Forez as they go down into turn five on this opening lap. The number four, who's probably done a million laps around here, or not Whoa. a million, but a lot of laps Whoa. here in the wagon. Oh, Chavi up, up and out. Seat. Oh, so and Ryder down. We got Ryder down, Greg, on the exit of turn 20. five there. That's CJ LaRoche. Yep, he's gone down. So, so unfortunately for CJ LaRoche on the Northeast Cycles Outlet Racing Yamaha R6, he's done. But Jay, the other thing too to think about is Josh Hayes has tons more experience yep. on a Dunlop rain tire than Chavi Forez does. Yeah, and Chavi looks over his shoulder, sees that they're gapping. He knows that the guy he's got to beat right now is we see another rider down in the background going through the museum corner. Chavi Forez is just going to, you know, probably let Hayes lead for right now because he realizes that Josh has some experience around here. So they'll be able to pace themselves, and we can see 
CJ just literally went down super, super easy. Thank goodness for that. And this is going to be up over in museum corner area. Yeah. yeah I know that's going to be uh, Jordan Tropkoff, I believe. Yeah. He goes down. So and this is kind of, see the dry line? It's, a, it's starting to appear. But these guys aren't going to be worried about it because they're going to be able to take off with the wet conditions. Everybody's going to have to be tiptoeing on slicks. And the guys on slicks are going to have to pit just as much as these two guys are going to have to pit. Josh Hayes, number four, Squid Hunter Racing Yamaha R6 leads the way. After announcing, he's coming back to racing full time with this team. They were able to put that effort together. And there's Chavi Forez on that Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati Pentagali V2. That seat abandoned. We've got a red flag, I think, again, oh, Greg. By Josh Heron, who moved on to Superbike. And another red flag out. So unfortunately, with the conditions very tricky, with a variety of tires, the red flag flies again. So our second red flag of the race. Now, we did have seven laps completed with Josh Hayes leading the way. So 21 laps to go. And Jay, there, there's riders around the racetrack. It's not like they're scattered all over the place, but there's some in precarious situations where they need to get back. There's one rider down in Charlotte's Web that we can see from our position that's kind of facing counter race distance. And they already definitely, up. Yeah, already yeah. up and moving around. That's going to be CJ, though, I think, from the first lap, Greg. I think we had some... Got a, we had Tropkoff go down over in the museum corner. We can see Amos is rolling there, so. All right, red flag. Josh Hayes was leading from Chavi Forez. Anthony Maziato moved up to fourth place. Or third place, sorry, Maziato. For Anthony Maziato, he's also on the Northeast Cycles Outlet Racing Yamaha R6. And then we had Ty Scott on that Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki. Michael Gilbert, the 55, who's still working his way back from injury on that Michael Gilbert Racing GSXR 750, was in sixth place. Jared Nassani. So, red flag out. This is one of those situations, uh, again, when the riders can come back to pit lane. I don't think anybody got into the pits that we saw. We'll double check that with timing and scoring when they have a moment. They're scrambling right now Could without Jared, question. Though. Could help Jarrett Nassani 100%. Yep. But so there's still a mandatory pit stop to do. Just crazy. And, you know, Jay, we, we saw this, too, in the forecast yeah. a long way off. There's Chuck Ivey, the number 13. Yep. And, and you can see it's drying. And so now, again, these teams and the riders have got to get together and come to a decision of what they feel is going to be best. The radar right now is showing that pretty much everything's blown out of the area. If there's a little breeze, this track dries actually really quickly. If the sun's coming down, the thing that's gonna help dry the track is having bikes going around. And right now that's not happening, but there will be a decision. Now you have a decision to make if you wanna go out and take a chance on dries, or if you still think wets are gonna be the, are gonna be the play. And all eyes will be on, on the four, obviously, and uh, 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 Josh Hayes and the 12 of Chavi Fours to see what those two guys kind of try to do because you don't want to handicap yourself by not kind of doing what you think the fast guys are the guys that are going to be up front are going to try to do got to see you know you can and again you got to see how long the red flag is going to be right you yeah you got to see how long, how long the red flag what's going on you know, we saw the ambulance rolling there for a moment so you know ama fim north america has got to sort the situation out with moto america As we can see the teams now talking, what are you going to do? I mean, this is one of those situations where it gets just so weird. If you're just joining us, this is Moto America Super Sport Extended Race, a race that is required by a mandatory pit stop. was scheduled for 37. This is our second red flag. As the rain fell, it is a flag-to-flag -flag race, but because of incidents on the racetrack, blocking the way and wanted to make sure everybody's safe, that the red flag came out and then course in these very interesting conditions and no mandatory tire uh, mandatory tires allowed that we had some riders go out on slicks some riders go out on full reins including Josh Hayes who is with Anna right now Greg Josh did make the decision to go out on full reins and Josh from from your professional perspective and all of your years of experience riding in all kinds of conditions how was it out there it was about what I would expect for a rain session you know usually uh, in the past we've gotten a little more time to figure it out but 
you know, so putting it into a race situation is a little difficult, but we got our siding lap warm up lap to kind of take a look at it. And it's easy to get anxious when you get to racing, you know what I mean? So it's uh, definitely drying really quickly in certain spots. And I kind of thought that it was going to play out about perfect for having to do the pit stop, you know, uh, going from the rains to the slicks. And now it's just a matter, I think, now of waiting to see what the rules are going to be, how, how long we can ride before the pit stop, how long the race is. Uh, if we still have to do a pit stop. So whenever we find out what the rules are, we can kind of make our decision going forward from here. So are you waiting to make that tire decision for going back out this time around? Well, I think I can't do that until I find out what, what they tell us we can and can't do on the racetrack as far as the pit stop goes and uh, the race distance, things like that. So as soon as we know more, we'll be better prepared. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like we're going to get going too quickly, so it'd be pretty hard pressed to go back on reins. But if I can do it and only do two laps, who knows, we just have to see uh, like how long we're sitting here because it's drying really quickly. And uh, if I think I could get an advantage out of the rain tire. Now I talked to the team owner, Peter Strack, and you guys have made the decision to commit to the rest of the season. How are you feeling about that decision? Oh man, I'm, <laughs> I'm thankful for every opportunity I get to ride, you know, like I got to have a great career. It's a little different vibe this time around because I don't feel like my life depends on the results. I'm not trying to get an attack superbike ride, right? <laughs> you know, so I get to just kind of enjoy this. And, uh, you know, I'm out there, I'm watching Chavi, he's watching me and I'm just having a good time. I love riding and racing and I love the... I love the feeling of the fight, you know, so it's uh, it's fun at Road Atlanta digging in when I was a little behind those guys and just trying to hang on until they let me back in the game. Uh, I love every bit of it. It's all the feelings that I missed when I was away from racing for a while. So I'm just trying to take it all in and try not to get too nervous and go, man, you know what? Like whatever result I get, it's fine. I'm just going to go out and ride my best. Josh Hayes waiting to hear from race officials. I'm going to see if I can get you guys an update so he can make a decision as well as the rest of the teams on how to proceed. Tricky conditions. Red flags out. When we come back, we'll get it all sorted for you and get this extended race back underway. Well, as Josh was sort of alluding to now, it's uh, to find out what is going to happen with the remaining lap count for the race. Uh, it had been 22 laps after that red flag. Uh, with the six completed, that would have been 28. Two-thirds of that would have been about 18. Uh, and so by my reckoning, you had to get that pit stop done before lap 18. Uh, now we'll see what they do, how many laps will be left in this race after after this red flag. You and I were talking uh, off mic here that, that the, the strategy you thought was the strong one with that first red flag was put the reins on, burn them down in five laps. When the track dries, make your pit stop. And, yeah. then, and then go to the end. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking before that race started, you know, everybody had the uh, the the wets on, and I thought that's what you had to do, go with the wets, try to, even if it dried out in five or six laps, and then come in and do your pit stop, because everybody said they're good on gas. Right. Now. So do five or six laps, come in, but now the strategy's going to change again. I think if they went back out now, though, looking at the track, how fast it's drying, you can look on the front straightaway here. There's a lot of patches that's starting to dry. The track was definitely wetter than I thought when I first from when we first seen it up here, and I thought maybe do dry tires. And then when I seen the car mm -hmm. and the spray, I was like, oh yeah, they have to go out on wet. Yeah. You know, like you said, we talked about doing, you know, even if it was five or six laps, but I think they would have to even did more. Yeah. It was, it was pretty wet, and uh, then come in and do your pit stop. And that's the thing, if you go out, it's not. You have to do a pit stop regardless. If it was yes. flag to flag, no pit stop, the dry tires might be able to, to come into play at the end. But you have to do the pit stop anyways. Yep. So throw the wets on there, burn them up, then come in. All right. And uh, Michael Hill down in pit lane. What's the word from down there, my friend? Yeah, well, just to let you know, the countdown, uh, the five-minute countdown started about 30 seconds to go. So pit lane will open in four and a half minutes. I am down here uh, next to the uh, Northeast Cycle Outlet team with Anthony Maziato, who uh, in that restart uh, was uh, certainly living life uh, out there, was uh, up into the uh, top uh, three or four positions. Uh, how are you enjoying this uh, extended race? Oh, it's been interesting from start to where it's not finished yet. So, uh, yeah, it's just been a gamble of what tire to have on and rains on and off is drying out. So it's definitely going to be interesting coming here because now the whole two thirds race distance, we're going to have to come pit again soon. So it's going to be interesting for sure. Uh, I'm just going to keep putting my head down and doing the best I can and push to the front. It was nice to get some laps out with them front boys in the wet. So hopefully boost my confidence, be able to do that in the dry as well.
Obviously, as you said, uh, we uh, are going to still have to have mandatory pit stops. Does that make it a little bit easier with the tyre choice uh, to go with the wets, given that it is drying up super quick here? Yeah, no, uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I know a lot of guys are going to be doing halves and halves, and I don't know. So it's, uh, it's all about attrition at this point, I think, staying up and finishing this thing. Absolutely. Well, we'll let you uh, carry on three and a half minutes to go then until the pit lane uh, opens. I want to move out of the way. I did see CJ, uh, C, CJ LaRoche uh, was down here uh, a couple of moments ago. Yes, he is. He's uh, made his way uh, back across uh, here. Let me just come across if we can. I don't want to get too much in the way. If we could just move uh, across this way. I don't want to interfere with the team because I can see they're uh, busy, busy working. But uh, uh, both you and your teammate had a great start there. You were up into the top six and unfortunately uh, went down. Glad to see you're OK. Uh, have you been told, are you allowed to restart? I think I'm allowed to restart, but I haven't been told. So I caught a break. You know, I hope whoever was down out there is all right. But uh, we definitely caught a break. And I think both Anthony and I like the rain. So that played to our advantage a little. As obviously, as Anthony said, this is all new to everybody. We've never seen an extended race. In fact, no series in the world has seen an extended super sport race. Are you having fun? Are you enjoying it? Oh, yeah. Apart from the crash, obviously. Yeah, I forgot about that already. But yeah, we're having a good time. And I mean, everybody's in the same boat. So we're all here to find out what this is all about. And it's fun. Good job. Well, fingers crossed you get back out there. Thanks, yeah, CJ. Thank you. Appreciate thank you, buddy. Right, we're going to hand back to you guys upstairs. Uh, there's little uh, less than two minutes to go now until the pit lane opens. All right, and we're just keeping our eyes out to see what the uh, the change in lap count will be. Uh, a couple of things here. Uh, when they red flagged it almost immediately, it went back to the order that it was after the last red flag, uh, and we think that red flag came out before a lap was completed, a full lap was completed, and that's why. Uh, obviously, that's a big break for Jared Nassani, but you know, Stefano Mesa had dropped outside of the top, almost into the top 15, uh, starting on that slick. Uh, he gets rebooted right up into third. As a result of that, uh, he got a little bit of a gift there. Yeah, some guys, you know, it works out in your favor. Yeah. The red flag will, will help you out, and sometimes you're on the wrong end of it, and that's just uh, part of racing. But for Stefano Mesa, uh, saved his race, and then, you know, also Jarrett Nassani saved his race as well. Now they get back in the fight, and... We'll see what happens. The track's looking pretty dry right now, looking out the window, and see, uh, we're gonna do, uh, I think they just said 22 laps. So, so it's gonna be a total of a 28 lap race. So still a long ways to go, a lot to play for, a lot can happen, still got that pit stop. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely, and that, uh, again, uh, I'm, n I'm no mathematician, but by my reckoning, that would make lap 18. Uh, you'd have to be in the pits uh, by lap 18. Uh, to be able to get that stop done by the rules within two-thirds of the total completed lap distance uh, that would be expected here. Uh, and again, remember, you can do pretty much what you want on the bikes. You can refuel again here. You can change tires. You can do what you want, uh, but you still are going to have to make that pit stop because nobody had come in yet. So uh, that pit stop is going to still have to happen. And uh, th the other thing just to keep in mind here, folks, is if we get another incident with rain or whatever, not that we're expecting it, if we get past 21 laps in and we get a red flag, they can call the race at that point as complete because that's 75%. So just some things to keep in mind because uh, what are we seeing here? Josh still has the uh, rain tires on. So he might just be thinking, you know, try to get out and hammer a couple laps and come right back in. Some other guys are going to go with slick. So it's going to be interesting. Everybody has a little bit of a different strategy. Yeah, and the track isn't as wet as it was when we had uh, that first restart, but certainly there's some spots out there w when you go into dips that it's still going to be wet, still Roger. Still going to have water, but, you know, Greg made a good point talking about you guys only have a certain set of how many yes. wheels, you oh, know, yeah. how many different tires and wheels and all that that you can go out on. So it's going to be uh, going to be interesting to see. It looks really dry through here, so uh, some big decisions being made right now. And you just, uh, oh, we had a shot just a moment ago of Josh Hayes and uh, Alyssa Paris in a big discussion. I'm sure trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, there is a look at the 23 of Anthony Maziato on Slicks as he's making his way out. Love to see what Chavi's on here. Slicks. Yeah, all right. Well, it'll be interesting to see Slicks there as well. So that seems to be the popular choice. I like that move too because the with the track being a little bit green right now, his front tire looked like it was used. They put that used one back on, gave him that little bit of confidence with those wet spots. And hey, it's yeah. already it's already rolled in a little bit. It's a little pretty warm, so I think that's a that was a pretty good move. That's a great idea. And uh, so back on the installation lap, and we're going to have another restart here. It'll be Forez, Hayes, Mesa up in that front row. 
I'm really curious to see what Mesa's got on for tires here. Uh, then Tyler Scott, Teague Hobbs, Michael Gilbert, and then Jarrett Nassani, Anthony Maziato, and uh, Damian Zhigalov will be your top three rows. Also, if Josh realizes he might have made a mistake, he can come in pretty fast. Yes, you know, that's so. true. You know, that's the thing because, you know, to me, if he thinks, and they're the ones that are out there racing on it, if he thinks that there are still spots uh, enough where a wet will give him an advantage, even for a lap or two, like you said, you still got to make a pit stop. And everybody will be good on fuel now. So, you know, that's a great dice roll. I'm glad I'm not down there trying to piece all this together. You know what? Yeah, oh, no kidding. It's a little bit more fun just coming up here making the assumptions. <laughs> You know, what we, we to, should do. We get to speculate yeah, like mad. but Nothing changes for us. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, that's just a great view just uh, uh, that we have uh, here. Looking over, the, we get three different sight lines on this track, four really, and looking down and seeing that big spider and the web pattern on the grass for Charlotte's Web down there. I just uh, There's so much to love about this place. So here we go. Bikes are coming around. And uh, I am really intrigued. I would think that Mesa now would be maybe on slicks. Tyler Scott, let's see. It looks like he's on wets. Okay. Well, looks like wet. Yep. Wow. Let's check in quickly with Mike. Uh, are down here, Altus Motorsport with uh, Jarrett Nassani. The drama continues here at Barber Motorsports Park. Uh, the team, the Altus team, have been told that he cannot restart. Uh, and basically, uh, the team is basically saying, no, we are going to restart. And they're basically getting the bike together. They've told Jarrett, Jarrett's got the helmet on, the leather's on, ready to go. And uh, they're putting the final few touches to the motorcycle, I guess assuming that they can start at the back of the grid. And there's now Moto America officials basically saying, no, you are not starting this race. It's game over. So, uh, yeah, drama in the pit lane. And I'm sure we're going to see even more drama in a few moments time when the lights go out but uh yeah exciting stuff this extended racing isn't it also Corey ventura i think he might have been one of the riders possibly that brought out that red flag because i don't see his name on the uh yeah exactly. on the starting list the bike that went down across from us looked like an orange bike like his so i can't confirm 100 percent that was him but him not being here on the grid kind of makes me think that that makes sense i don't have binoculars so i really can't see but uh on mace's bike from this distance there it is that's slick. a slick so all right so all right i mean just looking out our window i mean you can just see it's drying yeah, so fast yeah. i mean this front straightaway is is basically just a few little damp spots. But right through here, through this part of the track, turn two and three, it, the, with the shade, you yes. see those parts? Yep. And that shade, it's not going to dry as quick. That's true. And it's going to stay wet, so you're going to be looking for that, you know, if that's on the racing line. Looks pretty dry down into five. So this is going to be a really critical lap, isn't it? I mean, you know, Josh went out. Josh Hayes for one already. It looks like they're, I see him pushing Jarrett Nassani's bike off, so he's not going to make the restart. I wonder if that's the not an active participant kind of a rule here. You can see the chase vehicle it's wandering around, but the, yeah, for anybody that's on wets, they are little, yep, yeah, little spot there. Yeah. With all the, I mean, there's a lot of bikes out there. So, I mean, each lap, this thing is going to dry out even more. I mean, it's going to it's going to change every lap. And right now, down in this dip could be a little bit of water can run down there. But for the most part, up over here and down, sometimes will hold a little bit of water. And this is another part of the track that could have a couple shadows. But it looks, uh, that part of the track looks 100% dry. That looks pretty on the good, screen. doesn't it? Yeah. This is going to be absolutely fascinating to see. I would think that uh, Josh Hayes has looked this over now, and I'll see, you know, Tyler Scott in the same boat. Are they going to, uh, at this stage, do one lap, come in and get that stop done? We are going to be finding out in a big hurry here, and it's time for us to send it back over to Greg White, Jason Fridmore for the call. Super Sport Extended Sprint. Six laps complete, 22 laps to go. Second red flag. 
It's been reduced. Nobody has done a pit stop yet, so you have to come in and do it before lap 18. All right, so unlike the last time, it was definitely wet. Now it's not. Josh Hayes has been motioning to his crew. Expect to see him pit pretty quickly, Greg, because these rain tires are going to melt. There's not enough rain, on, not enough water on the track anymore. We're way racing. Hayes put the hammer down. He's trying to get out the front with those rain tires, but those slicks. It looks like Ty Scott with a little elbow to Chavi Forez and the M4X Star Suzuki Rider with the vision wheel. He'll take over the spot. Forez trying to go around the outside on that Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati. And Hayes in four spots. It's a little damp there, Jay. It's but a little still, damp, it's not, but it's not, help not him. damp enough. Yeah, so the thing is, is he can come in now, can't he? he can yeah. Already, so he'll, he'll be able to come in. The one advantage that Josh might have, if there is any in this bad situation that he is in at the moment, is when he comes in and goes back out, he'll have nobody in front of him for a number of laps. In other words, he should be able to get into the pits and out of the pits before the leaders come back around, hopefully. And if that is the case, they can get the tires changed, hopefully quick enough, and he can run a bunch of fast laps, unencumbered with traffic or anybody else around him. Chavi Forez leads from Stefano Mesa. So it's Ducati versus Kawasaki. And Ty Scott has faded a bit and is, is that Michael Gilbert? In it's the Michael Gilbert in fourth. In fourth place on the 55. And it looks like Maziato behind him. And then you can see Hayes back there. So the two leaders on slicks right now. And it also, as you see, Ty Scott looked like he raised his hand going in off the end of that back straightaway. It looked like his hand was in the air. I believe Ty's also Ty's on rain in. tires. He's on rains, yeah. yeah he's so. on rains as well. So here comes Ty. He's coming to the yep. pits. Good man. Let people know. Like He let everybody know early. And you're going to see the number four right there coming in right behind Ty Scott. So both the 70 and the four are coming into the pits now as they head down pit lane. That's going to move up Michael Scott. Uh, sorry, Michael Gilbert and Maziato are both getting moved up. There you go. So Hayes has come in. Ty Scott is just up in front of him right now. There's the line that they have to cross. So now it's 55 seconds minimum without having to serve a penalty. If you go out early, there'll be a penalty. So here comes the vision wheel in 4X star Suzuki. Trying to get that front on. Again, it's really an average of nine seconds. So 55 seconds in the pits. And it looks like wheels going on and Hannah, you down with Josh Hayes' pit. I am, and they have a four rider, or four crew members, excuse me, over the wall policy. So you see all four riders here with Josh. They're getting that front wheel in, and that's the only thing holding him up from getting on this bike and getting back out there. Looks like he's having a little difficulty oh, with that front, front fender mount, getting the tire back in. Axel is in, Josh Hayes is off. Not too bad. Not too, too bad, but a delay, and that's gonna hurt him, of course, the time he missed on the racetrack on that first lap, too. And Ty Scott was out probably a good six, eight seconds, it looked like maybe before him, as the two leaders now, Chavi Forrest and Stefano Mesa, are gonna be, let's see what their first flying lap is here. You can see it's really dry out there. The battle right now looked like it's gonna be for a little bit further back. Now, keep in mind, these guys have got a pit also. And uh, the thing is, is that Hayes, I will tell you this, did a long run of 19 laps on a set of tires. He knows what his tires are going to be like at the end of a run. So these guys are probably going to stay out for as long as they feel like that they can. And all the while, I think both Hayes and Ty Scott, looking out my window, they have nothing but clear track in front of them. So Chavi Forez leading the way from Mesa on slick tires. Our third start is Mesa kind of checked up. He looked like he had a notion to go underneath, but keep in mind, there's a little bit of moisture there on the inside of that corner, so you don't want to take too much liberties to the inside spot. Down into Charlotte's Web they go. Well, you can see Chavi Forez. He's got the exit of that corner dialed in. He has a look over his shoulder to see where Mesa is. Teague Hobbs, Hannah. Teague is in, and this team has experience from running the Daytona 200 together, practicing these pit stops, but they did practice last night, and it shows because they are making quick work. Rear axle's already back in, and Teague is on his way. Hey, that's great pit stops from that M4X star team. I, I, when you look at it, Greg, both their riders came in. Both of them got out of the pits very, very quickly. So that's going to still put the pressure on the other teams that have seen those two guys come in and get out of the pits quickly. So the two guys out front right now, their crews have seen what M4 has done getting their riders back out. So it's going to put a little bit of pressure on them also. First flying lap for these two, 31-2. So if you look at the lap times they had done before, were 27s. And 
Right now, Mesa is just literally just hanging on to the back of Chavi and watching what he's doing. There's two times where I think Mesa could have gone up underneath for us, like you said, just now in turn two, and even in that last big long right-hander, but Mesa is just playing the patient game. A Kawasaki pretty fast, Titler's cycles entry. Now to give you an idea, Earlier on in this race, a 27.5 was the fastest lap set by Chavi Forez. Last time by, they went 29.9. So two seconds off the pace, as you would expect, with a little bit of moisture still around. It's a matter of just kind of finding that lap time, a tenth and a tenth here, a tenth there, to try to get yourself back up to speed. There's also the thought of looking at that radar to see, hey, you know, is the weather going to come back? When are we going to get this pit stop in? For sure, I can tell you that that Ducati V2 with a full fuel load and 22 laps to go on fuel could do it, could do go the distance, but you got to do that pit stop. They haven't done it yet. Moto America Super Sport extended race scheduled for 37. We've had two red flags, three race starts, and now we've got nine laps in the books. Chavi Forez leads the way on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati. Right behind him, Stefano Mesa, number 37. On that Titler cycle, Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R. Anthony Maziato is in third place. Michael Gilbert fourth. Sean Hopkins on the 39 is in fifth place. Carl Soltis is in the pits with the Disrupt Racing team. So he's come in. It looks like they're having trouble, Greg, getting that rear wheel in. So this is, again, this is a new, new for some of these teams. We know Disrupt was at Daytona this year with Hayden Gillum and with Soltis. So... We'll see if he's able to get that bike and put it, get him back out, Hannah. Well, it's also new for Stefano Mesa's team. This team has never done pit stops before. And while Stefano Mesa does have some endurance racing experience, the team was really making it a point to practice pit stops before this weekend and even last night. Stefano Mesa is actually only running one class this weekend, which is a little bit different from him. Usually we see him jumping back and forth on different motorcycles. So it gives him the opportunity to really focus on this monster of a race. He said overall, he just wants to work on keeping the tire under him. You know, they want to practice those pit stops. They only have a quick change rear. They don't have a quick quick change front equipment, so they will only be changing the rear of that motorcycle. So we'll see how that plays out for him as well. Yeah, well, the red flag definitely helped them on that one. So he's got probably a new slick as they started off this deal. But Jay, the thing that's interesting is we are in a race. And so pit crews at the Daytona 200 are in a race as quick in and quick out as you could possibly go. But in this particular case, if you go too fast, if you come in there and you don't need fuel and you just need a rear tire and they get that rear tire done in four or five seconds right. and you're out too early, you're going to be serving the penalty. That's right. So there's like, you know, you can take your time. You want to try to get it to where you can take your time and get yourself in and out of the pits uh, somewhat carefully. Because if you're, you're rushing and making the mistake, that is no good. And let me give you an idea if someone actually came in and did a pit stop in under 55 seconds. Let's just say for argument's sake, Jay, that it was a 50 second pit stop. You would be charged an extra five seconds to make up for that 55 plus a three second intervention time. So you would have a total of an eight second penalty. But what we'll, what we'll see here is the difference between on the racetrack, what your position would be and what you are in timing and scoring if you have a penalty. So far on our timing and scoring screens of the pit stops that we have seen, there's been no penalties handed out just yet. So everybody who's gone in and out of the pits is looking good so far. Sean Hopkins remains in fifth spot. CJ LaRoche in sixth. I mean, that's great. CJ LaRoche was on the ground and for him to still be there and now be in sixth, so that red flag played into his hands a little bit. And uh, it's just been kind of a <laughs> crazy race right now. And um, these guys are, what are we on, lap 11? So we got 17 laps to go. And I've been seeing some people come in and out of the pits. Some of the people that are a little bit further back. Ty Scott already up to 11th. Uh, looking at see where Josh is. Not sure if he's got something going on with the transponder though, Greg, because I know he's I know he's doing decent laps right now. Yeah, we have him in 19th uh, 19th up to position. 16th now. Up to 16th. Yeah, there you go. So Mesa just choosing a different line. There is the Squid Hunter Yamaha R6 with Josh Hayes aboard. He's just going to get out there now and just do his thing. 
I mean, there's nothing else that he can do. Just put those laps down. 29-0 the last time by. So he was actually a little little quicker than the leaders. Leaders were 29-4, 29-5. Josh Hayes, 29 flat. So mm -hmm. this is, he's, he's got to really be able to go out there right now with this clear track and just grind the laps down. You see him look over to the left. There's a big scoring pylon right in the middle here at Barber. And Josh is probably going to have a quick little look over there to see when he's up into that top 10. That way you start to know who the guys are that you're kind of catching up in front of you and, uh, and, and, the, and, and the people that they're up ahead the key for Josh Hayes the key for Ty Scott who've already done their pit stop is you want to be within 55 seconds of the two leaders so when they come in the pits they're gonna come out and they're all gonna be bunched up so Hayes has some work to do Jay because what's the split now between Ty Scott and Josh Hayes what do you well, think when you, when you look at it, what I'm looking at Greg is that Ty Scott and Teague Hobbs are pretty much they're, they're 6.2 seconds apart and then Josh is a little bit further even behind them so the thing is is that both M4 bikes Teague was actually behind Josh uh, when, when they uh, originally when they came in and he was able to not only get back out but get out in front of Josh as well and he's running some good lap times with his teammate just up the road from him. We're talking about the number four Hayes. Left part of your screen are our leaders as our aerial support provided by Lucas Oil Helicopter. A great job of covering Barber Motorsports Park from the overhead view. And that's Chavi Forez on that Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati. And Ste Stefano Mesa on the Titler Cycle Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R. Those two still have yet to do their pit stop. With Michael Gilbert now in third place, he's 7.8 seconds behind. Now they're starting to get into some lap traffic on the left part of your screen. Easily by. Boy, Mesa's just got some acceleration. He's patient, though. Mesa's literally just patient. He's watching right now. And, and you know, this is probably very, very easy pace for these guys. They were running in the 27s. They're running in the 29s right now. They're going to be coming up on traffic, like you said. So and there's the battle for third. Michael Gilbert right now. Oh, Javi gets an airborne over the curbing. He's been doing control. that, Jay. Yep. It, it, it's, yep. Yeah, there was a little bit more uh, concrete added to that curbing before we got here for the, IndyCar, for the race. IndyCar race. Yeah. yeah, so there's a little bit more room to work with than we've seen in the past 20 years of coming to Barber Motorsports Park. Getting to the halfway point of this race, almost. It's Super Sport, Moto America's extended race. If you're a fan of AMA racing in years past, you know that there's been some races with pit stops other than Daytona. They used to do the team challenges back in the day, but you'd have to switch riders. Now Moto America trying something new, something unique, where it's a solo race with a mandatory pit stop and another lap in the books for these two. And it's been an interesting race. I don't know if it was, uh, it's uh, unfortunately, the, the idea behind the race was for it to be a bit of an endurance race, but with the weather and a couple of red flags, it's really thrown this whole thing kind of crazy. So you can see two leaders going through some traffic again. Yeah, and the issue, of course, is where's the clean line? Where's the dry line? It looks mostly dry at this point. But normally here at Barber, when you come up on lap, tra lap traffic, you have your say. It's not always like that. Coming up over the crest of that hill, Jason, after they come out of turns two and three, going up over turn four, you don't want to be too wide. We've seen people, if they go really wide, like literally lose the front because Correct. it's very, very tricky there. But no problem for these two. Still 29-4, 29-3. Hayes is in the 28s now. So, and I'm looking to see where Ty Scott is. Ty Scott, 29-7. Teague Hobbs, 30.7. The guys in third and fourth, meaning Michael Gilbert and Monteato, they're both in the 29s. And here we go. Have a look on the left-hand side. Michael Gilbert's going to be coming in. You can see, I uh, looking out the window here, and Maziato looks like he's right behind him. He had his left leg out as well. So third and fourth place riders are, will be looking for them to come down here in pit lane uh, on this lap. Not a bad window, especially for the rear tire wear, which we really have no idea what's going on. I mean, the sun is out right now, so it's heating up the racetrack slightly. As Chavi Forez with the leg out, Hannah, looks like he's going to come in next lap. Greg, you heard him say this at the beginning of the race, but he told me in a little bit more elaborate explanation that the longer that he stays on the track, the better it's going to be. So even as these tires go off and the pace slows down a little bit, he's going to be losing less time by staying on the track longer than he would be losing to come in 
for that pit stop. Obviously, he indicated to his team that it's time. Those tires are ready for a swap. So as long as he can make good time on this pit stop, he's in good shape. You know, one of the things you could have done there, Hannah, in, in my opinion, is when you look at Chavi, he's putting his left leg out, Greg, to let his team know. It might not have been a bad idea had he let Mesa go through. So Mesa's going to know now that Forez is coming in as well. So as far as race strategies go, you know, maybe met, maybe let Mesa go through. Oh, you yeah. You come in and pit, Mesa's yep. going to keep going, you know. So now Mesa's, maybe he's told his team, I'm going to sit behind fours, and when he comes in, I come in, you know, because that's that could be a race strategy that's working. So, because uh, Mesa has not been eager to go past the number 12 at all. And uh, as they go down into off the back straight away, that left hander, we'll see if Mesa ducks in with him so that they can stay kind of together. And then we're going to see both of these teams' pit crews go to work. Now Mesa's going to stay out. Fours is on his way in. Josh Hayes up to seventh according to our timing and scoring screen. So here he comes. Now the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati crew going to go to work. Mandatory length in pit lane from when it starts is 55 seconds. So Mesa takes over the race lead on the racetrack. Chavi Forez in. Anthony Maziato in as well. So here we come down pit lane. And again, this is not the... <laughs> Hannah, what do you see down there? Jumping off the bike, that single-sided swing arm certainly makes this quick change a little bit better. They're only changing this rear tire here. Looks like the rear axle is in pretty quick, pretty clean. Nothing dramatic to report. Yeah, and so I'm sure that this crew is so experienced. They had someone down there looking at time, and they said, all right, good, get on out. You've, you've met the time with the where we are located on pit lane, and this will be the full 55 seconds. Again, Jason, with the flurry of pit stops we've had, we still don't have anybody with any early pit stop penalties. I'm still curious to know where, why and how we didn't see Josh actually catch Ty Scott and T. Hobbs and go by them. He's doing 29-4. Ty Scott's 29-4 that last lap by. So I'm kind of going to look out the window and see relation. Where is Josh compared to them? There's Josh Hayes. He's coming across start finish line right now, and he's up to fifth. And Forez literally is probably about eight to ten seconds up the road from the time he went out so we're going to keep an eye on that distance as well as far as how far back josh is but all the time he lost greg don't forget he lost a lot of time just in that first lap being on the wets it's going to take a little while for this to sort out because mesa looks like he's in the pits as well as sean hopkins cj laroche damian jagalov who's looks like he's in 10th place so this whole thing gets sorted out mesa Mandatory pit stop, getting ready to be done for him. The Titlers cycle racing crew getting after it, Hannah. Well, like I mentioned, they, they're only changing that rear tire. The front's definitely going to hold up, like you said, Greg. That pit stop or the red flag situation's definitely helped him out. He's already back on the bike. Rear axle is in, and he's going. It's a great stop. Team's pretty happy about that one. High fives all around. Really interested to see that uh, interesting that the ZX6R had to take on a little bit of fuel, but that should be just enough. So it's going to take us about a lap to sort out the timing and scoring in this one as the transponders will catch up. Mesa's going to have a pretty good gap, Greg. By the time he got out of pit lane, Forrest just went by our spot here. And uh, so, we're, we'll, we're, like you said, it's going to take a couple minutes, but Mesa got out pretty good time, it felt like. So... Looking out the window right now, I'm going to be able to see Mesa go down into the turn five area. Here's Josh Hayes again. He's up to fourth place. But it says that Anthony Maziato on the 23 is ahead of him. So to be honest, it looks like it's Forez out front, Mesa second. And I can see Michael Gilbert directly behind Mesa right now as they come out of turn five. So there's Xavi Forez on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati. And what's interesting after the pit stops is no one's around him. The question for Forez is where is Mesa on the racetrack? Moto America Supersport extended race, mandatory pit stop. All the front runners have done it. 17 laps in the books for Mesa, Forez, Maziato, Hayes, Ty Scott. It says is in fifth spot 
over Teague Hobbs. So Forez comes across the line, Jason, with a 27-7. That's only two tenths of a second slower. And he is in the number one spot. 3.4 seconds behind him is Mesa. And then Maziato in third on the 23. Josh Hayes comes across the line. So Hayes is 16 and a half seconds behind Chavi Forez and 4.2 behind Maziato. Now for Hayes, only a 29.8 where Maziato did a 29.1. Mesa on his outlap was able to do a 1 minute 43.2 seconds with Forez at that 27.7. In the museum corner goes to 37 of Mesa. 18 laps in the books for the front runners. A good look at the museum and the spectacular sight. So there it looks like the gap between Chavi Flores and Mesa. And there's the 55 of Gilbert, who's in 10th spot. And there's Anthony Maziato on our timing and scoring screens. Maziato in third place. He's got about, what has he got? 4.2 seconds. He's got to kind of hold Josh Hayes back. Last time through, Maziato, as we see a rider down. Trying to figure out who that might be. Don't like seeing the shoulder thing. Could be, might be Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin Horny. Horny. Yeah. The 40 who was in 18th place, so he's down. Javi Forez leads the way over Stefano Mesa. Two and a half seconds, the lead as Mesa starting to put the heat on Javi Forez. So Forez, 2.5 seconds ahead of 37 Stefano Mesa as he goes into the museum corner. Last time by, it was 27.5 for Mesa and a 28-4 for Chavi Flores. Keep in mind, traffic is out there. There are pit stops made, different tire choices, different speeds. This race has been crazy, but Mesa has his head down. He's no longer trying to follow Chavi Flores. What he's trying to do now is reel him in. Anthony Maziato in third, Hayes in fourth, Ty Scott in fifth, Teague Hobbs sixth, CJ LaRoche, Damian Jagaloff. Looking at pit and the pit rules, everything looks good. So now the gap, 3.1 seconds. If you're new to Moto America Super Sport Racing, there's no on by communication here. All the communication is done either with the riders looking behind them, which is not recommended, or when they come onto the front straightaway, the teams will have pit boards, letting the riders know what the situation is. So Mesa was able to close down on Chavi Forez for a moment, but now it kind of seesaws back and forth. About 2.5 JP to 3.1 seconds. Maziato, 11.8 back. Yeah, right now, Stefano Mesa, who has definitely got the same pace. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, traffic and things getting in the way, but there's, what is there, seven, eight laps to go now, Greg. So for Mesa, he's done such a nice job in this race. P team did a good job getting him in and out. Chavi Flores is just up the road from him. Chavi's getting some traffic. Kind of a bad area there down that back straightaway. Mesa with that clear visor, you can see his eyes and what he's looking forward to. That lap traffic. Trying to get a win for Kawasaki here at Barber Motorsports Park. Here's Flores, he just went through. So there's the three second gap from first to second place. Yeah, he was able to get by those guys, and, and you can see Mason. Mason's looking around on his bike. I'm trying to figure out what exactly he's looking at up around the handlebars, whether it's uh, the map change or, or something. As you can see, Chavi Flores has gone by uh, eighth place, Damon Jagalov, who's riding really well. Also, good to see him back here in our series. Mesa tips in 28.7, 28.2. Two. So Mesa actually closed up that last lap. Two and a half seconds now is the gap. But if you watch, Greg, if you look at it, he's, he's kind of looks like he's looking at something to me mm -hmm. up the handlebar, handlebar area. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Let's get to Hannah real quick. What's going on, Hannah? 
We've seen a little bit of everything weather-wise during this race, but I was curious about the temperature because the sun is definitely showing steady and it feels warmer for me personally just being out here. I checked with Dunlop and they said at the start of the race we were at about 102 degrees Fahrenheit track temperature-wise. The rain cooled it down to 93 and it's been holding steady at 93, but I have a feeling these final laps it might start to heat up just slightly here toward the end. Yeah, which if, if the competitors chose the R3 compound tire for Dunlop, the more heat, the better. That's the softer of the available options as opposed to the R5. And at this point, who knows what was mounted because we've had so many tire changes and so many different strategies that some of these teams are saying, hey, we're going to start an R5, the harder compound, maybe wait till later in the race if it was going to be flag to flag with 37 laps and then put the R3 on. So. It's really all up in the air at this point. But what we do know is Chavi Forez leads Stefano Mesa two and a half seconds. Anthony Maziato, who did a 29.5 last time by, is in third spot. But Josh Hayes isn't able to make any inroads and was half a second slower in fourth. Ty Scott doing about the same time as Josh Hayes is doing. They're doing low 30s. One minute 30 versus the leaders going 128.4, 128.1. Mesa's coming through traffic still too and, and and continuously just closing the gap. Problem is there's only six laps left. There's not quite enough laps left at the pace he's going, but Mesa is literally charging right now, trying to catch up as he's catching up now to Carl Soltis. You'll see them exiting that turn five area. It's all gonna be a matter of if Mesa can get through because Chavi has clear track out in front of him. Mesa's got one more person to get through. The other thing is Chavi Forez is setting the pace. Yep. So he's thinking about rear tire where for Mesa, if he wants to win this one, he's gotta do more damage to that rear tire than he probably wants to do. And the laps, like Hannah said, they're winding down. Yeah, he's he's you can see he that pass he just made there is a tough pass and there's the there's the gap and he's out on the curbs Greg he's out on the curbs running out there right now and there was a little timing uh, and scoring thing you can see Michael Gilbert has been moved back up into that third spot ahead of Maziata who's only a second behind the 55 but getting back to this now Mesa's got some clear track in front of him he's gonna have to really rip Greg to try to catch up to Chavi Fours 2.2 last time they went through. All right, so if you didn't see the pylon, if you're looking at our pylon right there on the left, we actually have information that's slightly different. So we're showing Chavi Forez leading Mesa, but in second, uh, third place is Michael Gilbert. So Gilbert's been moved up as Moto America timing and scoring made that correction. Anthony Maziato in fourth, Josh Hayes in fifth, Ty Scott, Teague Hop, CJ LaRoche, Jamie Jagaloff, and Sean Hopkins rounding out your top 10. There's a 55 of Gilbert as he goes through. Maziato got by him on that lap. It was a second between those two on the last lap, and Maziato was able to go 29-3 to Michael's 31-3. So he gained two seconds on Gilbert that last time by. It's going to push Gilbert back to fourth. Hayes, fifth. Ty Scott, Teague Hobbs, LaRose, Jagalov, and Sean Hopkins are rounding out the top 10 at the moment. Looking at lap times, 28-2 consistent for Chavi Forez. For Mesa, he lost half a second. Maziato, the 29-3. Gilbert down to 31-3 with Hayes, but Hayes is still 10 seconds behind Gilbert. So with about four and a half laps to go in this race, Michael Gilbert is looking pretty good for a very solid top five finish, still on the road to recovery from last year's injury for the Californian. And they've been struggling a little bit this weekend, has the 55, they've, they've been struggling just getting the proper kind of set up and he's just been a little bit off pace, Hannah? Yeah, talking to Michael Gilbert and just missing that that track time last season after his injury, he said he feels better physically here than Atlanta, especially when he's actually on the bike. He ran for the first time since his injuries on Monday, and he, he said it probably looked better than it felt, so he's working hard on his fitness. You know, he's juggling a lot of different roles throughout the race weekend as well. He runs this team, but he said overall throughout the duration of this race, patience is the key. How great is this right yeah. here? 23, Anthony Maziato who has been in and out of the series the last couple years. Yeah. He's a race winner in other classes. An absolute delight to be around on the Northeast Cycle Outlet Racing Yamaha R6. And Jay, you'll love to see it. A Ducati leading the way from Kawasaki, from Yamaha, from Suzuki. We've talked about balancing here in Supersport. The next generation motorcycles versus the Gen 1 motorcycles. I don't even know if you can call that. Yeah. But no, it's, it, pretty... it's been pretty incredible. But this race has been crazy. Yeah, this race has been a little bit wild, and it's had a lot of things thrown at us, as, as well as the riders themselves. 
Mason here got held up a little bit on that last lap at maybe great because he lost a full second. So right now that gap has sprung back up to 3.8 second for Forez out front. He is in full control now with about three and a half laps to go. Mesa here has done a really good job himself, putting himself in second, but I think he even knows now that it's going to be a little bit too little too late as he put in a valiant effort today. Yeah, and he's already driving out of that corner and the rear end's moving around. Keep in mind, if you missed the top of the show, this extended race counts as double points. It's 25 for a win, 20 for second, 16 for third. So for Chavi Forez with double points, he'd walk away with 50 to Mesa's 20 points in this championship. Mesa's pointing to his oh. rear tire, so... You know, he's, he's got to just try to bring this thing home because he realizes that, uh, you know, I don't know if they took a gamble on a specific tire or whatever they did, but it obviously didn't pay off. You can see the groove there on the left side, Greg. It's uh, looks like it's just worn down a little bit. So, but what, what's he got, Greg? 13 and a half seconds. Uh, let's get out of here with 20, you know, what is it going to be, 40 points, I guess it would be today. Yeah, be 40 points Double today. points. Yep. So he's going to get out of here with those double points and, 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 and live on. Go and to the more, next round. more importantly for Mesa, he's going to separate himself in the championship from Ty Scott. They were tied at 33 points apiece, 17 behind Chavi Forez. However, Forez will gain another 10 points, so it's going to be 27 points uh, in the championship. Chavi Forez over Mesa if it finishes like this. And of course, left part of your screen, there's Araldo Faraci, who is part of that awesome team, the Warhorse HSBK Racing Team. And they're looking on as their rider. They brought him in. Who was going to replace Josh Heron, the national champion, on the Super Sport machine as Heron was back in Medallia's Superbike class? Chavi Forez got the nod, and there was a lot of question marks as to how Chavi Forez would come to the States and deal with Dunlop tires. It's been years and years, over a decade, since he's been on anything other than the, the tires that he's on in the World Championship. And Forez has adapted to this motorcycle very quickly. Even more questions after a disastrous Daytona 200. But that race was a one-off and didn't count towards the Moto America Supersport Championship. Then there's this rider on the Titler Cycles, Kawasaki, who made the choice through Titler Cycle support to come and race Moto America full-time, something that this entire paddock has been talking about for years. Mesa has been in and out of this series. Could do it when he could, when they could afford it. And now putting on a great show and a great job by his crew to get him in this position. Xavi Forez leads from Mesa. From Maziato, Michael Gilbert, Josh Hayes in fifth, Ty Scott, Teague Hobbs, CJ LaRoche, LaRoche, Damien Jagalov, and Sean Hopkins still holding on to that 10th spot. Nick Seiling in 11th place, having a nice appearance as well. I believe this is his first race first Moto America race ever for Nick, all, all the way from California, obviously, so I I know him a little bit, and uh, you know, I, I, I know he's not a big fan of the wet, so <laughs> <laughs> I do know that for sure, but doing a really good job getting this bike and bringing it home back there in 11th, but uh, you know, Mesa really showed that he had some pace there before the pit stops, and uh, it's just been literally from the pit stops on. Uh, he, he put a charge in, not sure if he wore that tire out, 28.8 last time for our leader, 30.5 for Mesa. This guy's getting the white flag this time by. One lap to go for Chavi Forez on that Ducati V2, a motorcycle which does not have traction control, Jason. And that's the other thing that Chavi Forez, you know, in world endurance, I have to imagine when he's on those big super bikes, they have a little bit of TC. When it was wet conditions, he had it all in his right wrist, had a big moment coming out of Charlotte's Web, but able to hold on to it. And I think, a lot of this, a lot of what we're seeing from Chavi Forez is just experience in racing and a very, very smart rider and crew putting together a very different race. Yeah, experience is going to go a long way. And if you have a guy in Josh Heron that wins the championship last year and you're looking for a rider, Chavi Forez is obviously a great choice. And uh, he's got a lot of time on Ducati machinery, obviously World Superbike and so on. And uh, first time here at Barber, has a long look over his shoulder as he comes out of museum corner. He's not going to see anybody back there. 8.3 seconds, the margin last time by. As Chavi Forrest has a wave to the fans and a thank you to those that have stuck around in these differing conditions. So Chavi Forrest, Jason, he comes to the United States. He comes to Road Atlanta in Supersport race number one, wins it, race number two, wins it again, and now puts himself in a position to pull off the hat trick. 
So impressive by the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati New York entrant, Chavi Forez onto the front straight away, and he'll wave to the crowd, take the checkered flag, and the win with a stoppy across the line. Nice job, I like it. Little top rack action, but tip of the cap to Stefano Mesa, who is extremely happy to finish on the podium again and walk away with 40 points. But how about Maziato? I love this story. The number 23, Maziato comes out of the last corner. What a boost for this team to see this kid on the podium. Big congrats there. So Anthony Maziato will occupy the final spot on the podium. Here comes Michael Gilbert in fourth. So a good haul of points for him. 26, he'll walk away as his double points for this particular round. Josh Hayes should be the next one. Here comes Josh looking down. You know, I can already tell you, Josh Hayes is saying to himself right now, I made I the decision. Made yeah. I made the decision to keep Reigns on there, and I'm an idiot. That's what he's saying to himself <laughs> right now, because you can see on the warm up lap how frustrated he was. He'll take responsibility for that, no question. Congratulations between the two riders. Here's a look at Chavi Forez in this 16 lap affair. Of well, all 28 laps, you can see it was like lap two where he set the fastest lap of this race, a 127.5. But after that pit stop, with the drying track was able to go quick. All right, when we come back, we're gonna talk to Chavi Forez about his big extended race win, the first time in Moto America history. It was a race with an awful lot of machinations to it, uh, with two red flags and adjustments and laps and everything. Uh, but in the end, it proved to be pretty entertaining. Uh, Javi, uh, obviously, when it became clear Stefano was having a, a real issue with that rear tire, was able to open it up. But uh, it, I think this, without the red flags, without the rain or everything, I think it could be a really interesting it, uh, you know, thing to see here. Well, that's the interesting thing about the, the long race is all the different variables that goes into it, yeah. making tire decisions. Some guys made the right one, others, you know, made the, the wrong decision. Yep. And I think for, for them, you know, this was kind of the same thing at, at Atlanta. He wasn't, we mentioned it this morning in qualifying, he wasn't really, didn't set the world on fire in practice and qualifying. But when the race starts, he finds himself at the front. And I think that's, for him, you know, come here and get the double points, extending that gap. Uh, just also for the extended race too, it's more than just the rider. Oh yeah. It comes down to the crew. You make one mistake, his pit stop was flawless. His pit stop was flawless. I think the pit stop of the race goes to Michael Gilbert Racing, uh, which is pretty impressive since it's Michael Gilbert and Michael Gilbert Racing, and they executed a stop that jumped him up into third. Uh, it was such a good stop. I think it confounded the scoring for just a little bit. Uh, then he eventually, obviously, still recovering from injuries. But you think about it, he had two fifths at Road Atlanta. He's better here now with a fourth. He's got to be delighted with uh, the progress for his comeback. Teague Hobbs with a great stop and a fresher tire than Tyler Scott, who also started that second go on the wet, got to within a half second to Tyler. I mean, there was some fun stuff happening out there. And how about Anthony Mazzato yeah. too? What a, a Mazzato, what a run. Yeah, wait a great ride for Anthony Mazzato going to the Super Sport class this year and getting on that podium. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. He mentions, uh, you know, during one of the red flags that, man, I had uh, hung with the leaders in the wet for two laps. Now I have the confidence. It just took those two laps, two laps in the wet yep. to run with the, co the confidence and all of a sudden he finds another couple couple gears so it's great for him and also that team you know they've been in super sport for a couple years been on the podium but uh good jump start for him he's a really talented rider and i think after today you know he could have found himself consistently in that top five or in the podium yeah, absolutely i think it's uh, it's just fabulous but for javi forez i mean basically three wins to start the season straight and this race with the double points, it's as if he's had four wins in terms of points. Uh, that is a pretty fabulous go right there. Uh, you got to be happy about that. And there's Anthony uh, really enjoying the moment. A little bit different look for him this year than we've seen in the past. Uh, and Stefano Mesa, I mean, he was coming. And then uh, that tire just, uh, you know, something went wrong as he just started to drop like a brick. He was pointing at it. There was some issue there, but still hung on for second and uh, is having a really good start to the season as well. Yeah, really good start and just being super consistent. And that's what Stefano does. And when he realized he had that problem, he just slowed down a little bit, knew he had a big gap, yeah, yeah. just make it to the finish. He, he, he comes in a 
again to change the rear tire because he's having an issue, then he's gonna run his race. So he did the right thing, just slowed down a little bit, uh, brought it home in second. Yeah, there's a good look at Stefano. He is, uh, you know, one of the real gents in this paddock. Uh, really like him. And I want to give a shout out here to Mallory Dobbs, who just kept her head down, drove an absolutely great race, 17th uh, in this field here, bringing it home. Uh, not a bad day at all for Mallory. So congratulations to her and that uh, and that racing program. Uh, just doing a great job. But uh, you can see Chavi, they're all down in Victory Circle now, and uh, looking forward to the interviews and the celebrations. And since this is their their one race on the weekend. They really get to celebrate up there on the podium and probably a little bit more of a celebration this evening than they might have on a doubleheader weekend. So with that, we are going to get ready to send it back over to the primary booth here as uh, we get ready for interviews. Moto America Super Sport coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit Geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. Back at Barber Motorsports Park, extended super sport race in the books for the first time and going down in history is Chavi Forez with a 9.8 second win over Stefano Mesa, Anthony Maziato on the podium, Gilbert Hayes, Scott Hobbs, LaRoche, and Jigalov, your top nine. Let's get right down to Hannah who's in victory lane. Three victories in a row and a double points haul for Chavi for as our championship points leader. Chavi, how did those red flags influence the strategy? Did things go to plan or did you have to kind of change what you were thinking? Well, we've been adapting, especially it was quite crazy to have uh, two red flags early in the race. Uh, especially the second one because it was uh, full wet. We've been on rain tires out there. And uh, after the, the, the red flag, we've been waiting for to, to rejoin the track and uh, the track was completely dry. So I, de I decided to go on dry. So it, was, uh, it was a bit risky, but me and Stefano Mesa did the same choice and we put some miles away from the others. So the first, uh, the first set of tires I was trying to manage myself uh, because it was a medium tire and they had not the same feeling. But then when I did the pit stop, guys worked so well on the pit stop, so good, uh, so accurate. We put the soft tire to, to the end and it was uh, a good end. I was uh, putting some pace of 27, so super happy. So I want to say thanks to all the, the sponsors, Workhorse, Parts Unlimited, Ducati, Tivent, and everyone supporting me, KYT, Alpine Stars, because it was a, a very sprint uh, weekend for us. Congratulations, Xavi Forez, and second place today goes to Stefano Mesa. Stefano, you stuck with Xavi there after the restart, choosing to go out on slicks. He mentioned it was a gamble. Was it a gamble for you as well? Yeah, I mean, that I went out in the first restart with, with uh, slicks, and everybody was on wets. I think it was only two of us on, on dry tires, and I was like, well, I knew we did a mistake, you know? So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and not happy the red flag came up. Uh, it kind of helped us, and how Chavi said, uh, first lap, we pretty much, him and me, just kind of checked out. Uh, the track was pretty much good after the restart and just put our head down. Uh, I was able to hang with him for the first part of the race. Uh, our first pit stop with the team worked flawlessly. Thank you, boys. Uh, got me in and out, so happy for that, and was able to put it, put it all together, you know. Uh, I want to thank my sponsors, Tyler Cycles, Dainese, KYT Helmets, just everybody for making it possible. Appreciate you. Congratulations, Stefano Mesa. And rounding out the podium today is none other than Anthony Maziato. Maz, take us through that race. What was it like from your point of view? Oh, that thing was hectic, man. Uh, we started from pretty far back in the race. Red flag once, made our way back closer to the front. Red flagged again. So once it started raining and I had the wets on, I felt like I had some pace for them guys up front. And uh, it really sparked a little fire under my butt to get going. So I'm glad once the we restarted the race. We went and started on drives. Thanks, Kyle from Northeast Cycle Outlet. He's the man for making that decision because if it was me, I probably would have went on the wets, and we all know how that goes. So, <laughs> uh, But, yeah, I can't thank all the guys enough. Uh, it's awesome to be back up here, you know, in the super sport class, and I'm just going to keep working on it and picking away and see if we can get a little bit closer to these guys up front. So thanks, everybody. Congrats, Anthony. Guys. I mean, I just absolutely love seeing this. Yeah, love I seeing it. Yeah, it's great. And it's good for the Northeast Cycle guys, and I know Kyle and all those guys are going to be happy to get this result today. Good podium for them. Perfect 100 points for Chavi Forez. Three race wins, including this double points pair. And Mesa 27 back with Hayes 46.
Now, Jason, it's our first extended race, but let's look down the road a little ways to WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca because we are going to have another Super Sport extended race there. I'm going to make a wild call, say in July at Laguna Seca, there'll be no rain. So let's just hope I keep that <laughs> right. Oh. This will be a fun one when we get there. That'll be a physical track for everybody. It's extremely physical, and I know a lot of riders are looking forward to that, saying, I've got to make sure that I work out. So extended race. I would say big success. Crazy race, Jason Pridmore, because obviously the weather played a huge factor in this one, but it was Chavi Flores and his team that played it to perfection. 28 laps, three starts, one pit stop, and one winner. Absolutely spectacular. We look forward to seeing you at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, coming up. For Handle Open, Jason Pridmore, I'm Greg White. Thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait to get Supersport rolling again in a couple weeks. We'll see you then.